In this video, you're gonna learn how to make the T slot slider. Let's get into it. I love this one because it is very classic and robust, and then also very versatile in all the ways that you can use it. The first thing you need to decide when you are making a slider like this is the width and length of the actual sliding part of the mechanism. The wider you go, the more room you will have for the top pieces, the top guides, to hold down that slider, making a little bit of a stronger connection. If you made the slide in the center too thin, these top guides would have a hard time getting a good grip on it without coming super close together. If you end up going really wide, perhaps your slider is the same size as this base right here, you might actually want to make it a little bit more durable by adding another layer of cardboard and making it two layers thick. But if you're about an inch wide, I've found that that is pretty easy to work with. Concerning the length of your your slider the longer you make it the more stable and durable it is going to be but it's gonna have less range of motion say I'm sliding this slider along the base right here but if I don't want it to go past the ends of the base I can only move it back and forth a little bit before I hit those edges if I had a really small slider it wouldn't be as stable, but I could slide way across the whole thing before hitting those edges. Now, if I want something that sticks out of the end, it's a little bit of a different game, and I'm still going to need a long slider because I still have to be able to stay hooked onto it, even when I'm way out here. Whereas, if I had a little one, I could only stick it out a tiny bit before I would just fall off of the end. Once you figure out how big you want the slide to be, you need to move on to making these side guides. I've already done a little bit of work on these and cut them out so that we can speed up the video. Basically, these need to be made out of this same piece of cardboard, the same thickness kind of cardboard as your slider is made out of. What this allows us to do is put the slider in the center, put our cardboard pieces on the side and they're gonna sit perfectly flush. We don't have to worry about cutting them to the right height. All we need to make sure we do is cut this front edge really flat and straight. Unfortunately, the trade-off here is because we're now standing on the corrugation, we need them to be a little bit thicker than if we had cut them upright like this. So if you want to go for it, you can measure the thickness of your cardboard. In my case, it's about an eighth of an inch and then cut an eighth of an inch tall piece of cardboard to get the absolute thinnest side guide. You'll notice that I also put a piece of paper down the inside of this to reduce the friction a little bit. Just be sure that when you're gluing this paper on, you do it very carefully, especially if you're using hot glue, and you don't get like globs of glue making it super bumpy. Now I'm going to position the slider with the side guides in the center of my base, and I don't want to squish them together super hard when I'm doing this alignment because that would make it really hard for the slider to move up and down. Maybe you could do that if you wanted sort of a tension fit that would hold its place. This is also where it's helpful to have a long slider because I can make sure that they are flat. If I had just a tiny little slider, it would be hard to get them perfectly flat and I might end up with an angled shape where it slides too freely at the top and it's too tight at the bottom. So if you end up with a really small slider, maybe try making a larger template that's exactly the same to help you with this alignment. I want to make sure I don't put too much glue on there and then I'll lay it down so that if I have any squish out I try to make it squish out of the back. It's always good to test your projects as many times as you can while you're building them so that if you notice a mistake you can fix it early on. As I glue this I'm going to try to offset it to the back again so that we don't get any overflow onto the actual slider. This is just slightly tighter than I intended but I think it'll work well enough. One thing I'm noticing is you might actually want to plan this with a piece of paper on the side of the slider as well so that you don't get all of these bits of corrugation trying to snag on the top of this piece of paper right here where it keeps catching on its way down. Now it's time to cut out our top guides, but before you go Hail Mary on that, there's a little bit of math you want to consider. What I do for this is you take the width of your side guide plus half of the slider, and then you're gonna subtract the size of your handle, because if you went with that first equation without subtracting the handle, you'd end up covering your entire slider like this. So we subtract 
half of the size of the handle from each side so that we have an even gap right in the middle and then our handle fits right here. So my handle is about a quarter inch thick, which means I took an eighth of an inch off of both of the top guides. I'm gonna keep the slider in here when I glue the top guides on so that I don't accidentally glue them on with a downward tilt or an upward tilt that would affect the like tension inside of it. This just means I have to be a little extra careful not to get glue on the inside. Today I am using an Easy Flow hot glue gun from Hoto and Gorilla Mini dual temperature hot glue sticks. We have our slider in here now and we still have to put the handle on, but I actually don't love the way this guide glued down right here. I had to change the glue stick in the middle of gluing and this part got a little bit too cool. So there's sort of a hump. So I'm actually gonna use a little hack to sort of re-hot glue this with a heat gun. So this is a little bit of a tricky thing to do because it melts all of the glue around the area that you're blowing the heat. So you have to be careful not to accidentally adjust something else. However, it does bring up the point that if you wanted to sort of adjust the tension on your slider after you'd glue these together, if you had a heat gun and maybe a hairdryer would work too, but I don't have one to test with, you could sort of change how tight it is inside of there. I made my handle two layers thick just so it's a little bit more durable and so that I have more surface area to glue on the bottom. Instead of using a bunch of measurements, I'm just gonna put my slide inside of here and glue it on while it's between those guides. To make this connection a little bit stronger, cause there's gonna be quite a bit of force going through here, I can't really put any glue along this edge right here or this edge, cause those are rubbing against my top guides but I can add some right here for more strength. If you have sort of a big blob and wanna control it, you can always sort of lick your finger and manipulate the hot glue. Our slider is almost finished, but it's time to tune it up and make a couple little adjustments with the heat gun. If you don't have a heat gun, that's okay. Just be a little bit more careful as you're making things and you can sort of sand things down and trim little bits off once you're done. The heat gun is just a little bit more of a like holistic cleaner way to do it. So I don't have to like cut little shavings off of things. What's happening is my handle piece is rubbing up against the side of my top guide right around this point and it gets really harder to push. I could have left more clearance between the top guide and my handle, which I would have been able to do more easily if I had made a wider slider but for this we are just going to use the heat gun and make this all slide back just a little bit right there so we have a smoother, more consistent motion across the whole path now. You might have just watched this video and thought that, gee, that takes quite a while to build and takes a lot of pieces of cardboard. That's why I have this video right here where you will learn how to make the slot slider, which only requires a couple pieces of cardboard and can probably be built in like a third of the time. So click or tap on that right there or subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. God bless you. Uh, I'm Eli and this is Make Your Brain. Have a blessed day.